Yeah, Alex, how much did that hurt to Dave? Just, yeah, just the whole process, the way things went down. Uh, it was, uh, I think, more than anything, uh, like really bizarre. Uh, just the, uh, yeah, I mean, I view it from a goalie perspective, so I see it like in in Rhymes' position, and he was grinding so hard to win that game all day, and um, obviously in the moment he was so focused on that, and he did a great job. Uh, but then you have the weird like high and low of it. So I think uh, just like a crazy way it played out, and. Uh, a strange ending, but maybe kind of fitting to uh, the way the season went down. Were you able to reflect on, I mean, this, this was such a, you know, opportunity, opportunistic season for you, like just what this does for your career and, and going into next season? Uh, for me, it's just, it just gave me a very clear view of um, uh, the things that uh, I need to work on and, um, trying to find that uh, you know consistency over the full course of the season it's a, it's a difficult thing and um, uh, it just gets me excited honestly and, and motivates me really more than anything um, to just be the best version of myself and uh, now kind of having a better understanding of maybe what what that's going to take and what that looks like it's the first year of your career you haven't played a game in the AHL. Is that something that you stop, you not celebrate that, but like, do you think about that at all? For sure, I appreciate that. I mean, I appreciate the Red Wings for putting the, the confidence in me and, and the coaches. Um, I've never really had that uh, runway before. Um, and I'd never really thought that that would even be a possibility. I think for me, I feel, I feel pleased that I'm not, you know, too emotionally high about it. I, I have thought about that for sure. And, um, I guess if you would have told me that two years ago, I would, probably would have thought I would have been more excited about it. But um, just the way the season ended and kind of how things went, how things went down, I I feel extremely motivated and and, and hungry. I, f I think I feel more hungry now than I ever have been. So um, that's a good feeling. Like your own personal expectations for yourself on this? For sure. I mean, I think uh, I think to last a long time in. Pro professional hockey you have to be hungry all the time and that's something that you learn and you get better at and so for me I, I guess I, I look at it as like if I would have played all year in the American League or played all year in the NHL I think my hunger level would be the same you just kind of teach yourself to stay hungry and be hungry um, but uh, yeah like I said I think now that I have an understanding and how much I learned this year um, it's good. It's a good recipe and a dangerous recipe. It's it's good. This was the first time that you've had to sort of carry the load for an extended period at the NHL level. What did you learn from that, and what what do you take out of that moving forward? Yeah, there's. I mean, so many things. I mean, the day to day. It's it's not one thing. It's just a culmination of really everything and. Um, it's really been the first time, honestly, that I've not even carrying the load, but I've just been at the NHL level. You know, I haven't been in the NHL for more than two or three weeks at a time. And so learning, uh, you know, the travel and and that that's so much different, the schedule, the every other day. You know, in, in the American League, you get so used to playing on the weekends and you might play three games in three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's more of like that sprint mentality rather than a more marathon mentality. So um, just I feel I feel like I just, like I said, I learned a lot and um, just got to use it and, and make sure I use it wisely going forward. Or even like a training camp, I mean, did you think you were going to be that veteran insurance guy in Grand Rapids? Was that kind of like the belief? Or what were you thinking, basically? Yeah, I, 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 I I mean, you always, sh you know, you shoot for the stars and like you, you want to believe the best case scenario. Uh, but yeah, realistically, I thought uh, I would probably be in Grand Rapids this year. Um, and uh, given what happened last year, I knew they, you know, they might be a little bit more inclined to, uh, to play me here. Um, and I also just kind of saw this group as up and coming and, um, 
you know, I, I, I know what I bring to the table, and I just felt like it would have been a good fit, uh, uh, you know, bringing that consistency and the energy on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that's one of my strong suits. Um, and so I just felt like this was the group uh, that was kind of moving in that direction. Um, and so after last year, I didn't really know what to expect moving forward. And, and this year, uh, the way that it played out was crazy. And um, yeah, just happy I got to play a lot of games. Sorry. The start of the year, you didn't play at all. And you were expecting maybe to be in Grand Rapids, as you said, but yet you've had a real unique path your whole professional career. Uh, Derek Lalone kind of went out of his way several times in the beginning of the year to say that your day's coming to talk to you. Well, can you talk about your relationship with him and how important was that because you weren't playing and you're practicing and you have good practice habits and you know what to do and be prepared. I know all that, but how important was it to have the head coach tell you, just sit tight, everything's okay? Yeah. Um... It was it was difficult for sure at times, uh, if I'm being honest. Um, but that being said, I think uh, that's one thing that um, yeah, it, it was good. I mean, it was good. It was good for them to communicate that with me for sure. But uh, there were also times when I didn't maybe necessarily know the future, and I because you know you you hope for the best, and and they're gonna say. Uh, keep keep grinding, and everybody's gonna say, but you just also don't know. You know what I mean, and and so um, you just have to believe that and trust that. And um, there have been times in my career where, like taxi squad season, where you let go a little bit, where it's like um, you don't ever feel like you're gonna play. And so I think that just those experiences have helped me a lot. And uh, I think one thing that I'm good at is now is just taking it day by day a goalie is a 365 day a year job um 24 7 so um that's how i operate i um you know take it very seriously all the time and so um yeah there's just no downtime and i think that that, that helps me in those situations a lot you, ever think there was any time where you, you weren't going to clear waivers that you know your time in detroit was going to be short that if they tried to get you down to Grand Rapids just to play and all that, that, you know, you might be picked up by another club. Uh, it crossed my mind, you know, early on there for sure. Uh, th uh, that being said, I, I kind of had the inclination that maybe that uh, the plan was to try to avoid that. Um, and uh, and so they obviously made the decision to go three, three guys there at the beginning of the year, and, and that kind of changed my perspective a little bit. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm not really sure what else to say about it. Yeah, it was just a, kind of a crazy situation and, you know, I've, I've reflected on it a lot in the last 24 or 48 hours or whatever. And, um, I guess it's just like, like somebody else said, it's just a, uh, uh, signifier of what my career has been. Back of that, can Matthew be a pretty good candidate for Worlds for Team USA? And I know I think it was one year at Yale, you were a third string goalie. Like, have you thought about maybe having a chance to go there and maybe play in that tournament? Uh, yeah, it's crossed my mind. Um, you know, I think things are still pretty fresh here, just logistically, like in terms of what the next couple days looks like for me. And so that's kind of where I'm living at right now. But um, to get an opportunity to wear the USA jersey is something that I've not, like you said, I played in the world champ as third goalie. Um, and so I would love to maybe have a bigger hand in that. Uh, but um, yeah, it's always an honor, and even to get asked is, is an honor. Um, and I uh, take that pretty serious. Did you change from what we saw at the start of the year to the way you guys were playing at the end? Like what, what was the growth that you saw in the guys in front of you? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that it's obviously you know, the way the season played out was, was bizarre and the super high highs and the, super, and the low lows. But um, I see it as just part, part of a necessary process. And I think early on, especially the way we started the season and we were clicking at 50% on the power play for like three weeks or something like that. Um, uh, it's, and then 
we were scoring like what averaging five and a half goals a game for like the first month or something and how explosive offensively we were I think I think every team in their maturation process comes to the realization uh, that you can't necessarily rely on goals all the time and the ability to keep pucks out of your net is something that you can control to a much greater degree than uh, putting the puck in the net so uh, I think that we I think the coaches did a great job and but but that's what you're trying to instill all the time right and I, I saw it with Florida last year they won the President's Cup and they were clipping at an insanely high offensive rate and then um, they had to adjust their game to play that you know very physical heavy um, game but also keeping those other offensive uh, kind of nodes in there as well and uh, I think that we made a lot of progress in that this year. And the, and the way, I, I think the other thing is the emotional aspects of the game and realizing how hard you have to play against other desperate teams. Because if you're not as desperate as they are, um, you just don't even give yourself a chance. So just to give yourself a chance, you have to play with a great deal of passion and focus. Um, and I felt like we got better. Even, even, that, even when we were losing there for a while, um, I think it's super valuable and uh, you know it puts the fear in you of like okay you don't want this to happen again um, and so it was it was awesome to see and like just seeing how some of the guys grew and flourished obviously what Razor did at the end of the year was nothing short of incredible um, um, so it was fun it was it was a fun process hard play uh, I think Sider led the league in block shots this year and I know there were several times where he'd block a shot and he'd just kind of limping to the bench I mean what's that like as a goalie when you see the sacrifice that those guys make? It, it's it it has not nearly as much to do with the actual shot blocks as it does for the mentality of your team you know, if that makes sense um, and when you have a guy like that who is clearly a big piece of the team and um, is going to be a big piece of the team when he sacrifices like that and just shows that emotional investment in every game, it, it bleeds over to everybody else. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's contagious and maybe another guy, um, you know, gives that extra, or maybe Alex Lyon dials it in that extra half, whatever percent more, you know, it's just, it, it's contagious amongst everybody. and. Uh, you need that. You just need that uh, to win games and down the stretch. And like I said, the ability to keep the puck out of your net is um, is crucial. And and I I couldn't be more appreciative of what Mo did this year. And just from a goalie perspective, to have and it goes it's across the board. All the D men did a great job this year and sacrificed um, every game. So um, for me as a goalie, it it means a lot. And um, I just hope that I can, you know, reciprocate that on a daily and game by game basis. Can you navigate this increased workload this season and the experiences that you went through for your off season? Are there some key components you're maybe focusing more on, or is it still continuing the same process that you talk about? You always emphasize. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you you learn and kind of understand um, how to deal with different situations. I think I think there's always room for improvement in in, in all facets and. Um, I think if you are blind to the deficiencies that you have and um, you ignore them, it's just uh, it's not a good good way to go about things. So I think I always think about it as like, okay, I'm not going to be you know 50 or 100 percent better in any one category, but if you can just find a way to be five percent better in many categories, that's really how it adds up. And um, so that's kind of my mentality is um, I would love to be 5% better better shape and, and more well conditioned and, and more prepared for training camp and uh, mentally and emotionally in the right spot and um, do the right things and build those habits. So uh, uh, that's kind of the way that I've approached the last few summers and it's and it's been pretty fruitful for me. So um, yeah, just got to be super honest with yourself. Alex, did you assess Simon Edmondson in his stint up here? What did you, uh, what did you think of him? crazy how good he was uh it was a treat to play with him and I think with guys like that it's like if you don't notice them that's the biggest compliment and the the best sign for them is like C stepped in and and was seamless with with 
how we were in the locker room and how we were on the ice. And that's a very difficult thing to do. And usually, you know, with young guys, it's kind of like you're, you're have to be careful and try to maybe protect them a little bit. But with Simon, it was just natural. And um, like I've said before, he has an extremely bright future um, along with a lot of the other young players here. So it was uh, nice for me because I know in 10 years, it's going to be like, hey, I got to play with that guy. He's one of those guys for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alex.